Okay, coming off an off week, uh, which was much needed. Uh, we evaluated all three phases like I said we would. It was really good for us to kind of get back to the basics. Um, it was really good to heal up, too. Uh, you know, two of the guys you'll hear, hear from, John Rice and, and Ricky Barber, will both be back, which is really good for us. Um, looking at an Oklahoma team, a number six team in the country, one of the best teams in the entire country on their home field, a great environment. You look at their offense, I think they're number six in the country offense. Uh, Dylan Gabriel, which we know well, obviously, an outstanding quarterback. He's playing at a really high level. they got a good run game, too. Defensively, uh, one of the better defenses in the country. Uh, you know, good challenge. Uh, you know, they got really good players. they got a good scheme. You know, their head coach went against him. We went against each other numerous times. We know, knew each other well. So it's a good challenge for us, but it, one we're looking forward to. And like I said, coming off the off week, our practices were really good. Um, I really feel like, you know, the three practices we had last week, we got better each practice. Um, our guys had great spirit about them. Uh, we had a really good practice yesterday uh, just to get a little head start, you know, on Oklahoma. Questions? Coach, obviously the run defense has struggled in the Big 12 games. What have you identified specifically that stands out to you for why you've had so many problems there? Yeah, there, there's a couple things. Uh, you know, there's a couple scheme things that we'll definitely clean up that uh, will be addressed. You know, like I said, anytime you have an off week, you're able to go back and you're able to evaluate everything. Uh, so uh, position-wise, maybe you'll see some guys a little bit different in some different positions, but really just scheme-wise and just our approach to certain things should help us uh, tremendously uh, in our run fits and our run, run defense. Guess you mentioned uh, John Rice coming back this week. Is he 100% and, and will he start yeah. for sure? And, and, and we're, is there any opportunities, maybe Timmy, that we'll see Timmy on the field as well? Yeah, yeah no, he will start for sure. Uh, he had a good week last week. Uh, really, last night was really the first time I really took a look at kind of where he's at. I'd say he's close to 100%. So don't expect any issues moving forward. Timmy, obviously, will be ready to go. Uh, did a really good job for us. Uh, he'll be ready if called up on, but right now, John Rice is uh, he's, he's our quarterback and ready to go. Coach, what are some things that you're focused on going into this week, heading into Oklahoma, where to make sure the guys are kind of locked in and not getting too focused on everything else going on? Yeah, you know, really, it's more about kind of uh, getting back to the basics, getting back to who we are offensively, defensively, and special teams. I know it's been really good for our coaches, which usually that's the the case, you know, because you get so wrapped up in your opponent and scheme and. And for the first time, you can really look back and you can watch and watch every rep on all three phases. There's some glaring things that we need to improve on uh, that we're addressing, which um, you know will give us the best plan moving forward. I'm excited about the second half. Uh, I'm going to bet if you ask most of our players, they feel the same way. It was kind of one of those re really be able to push pause, kind of refresh, uh, regroup. Um, you know, like I said, I still think we have a good team. We just need to play good football, and I think we're ready uh, to do that. What makes Dylan Gabriel so good? Well, he's uh, he's got an outstanding skill set. Um, you talk about a guy that, you know, when we had him every day in practice, he would make a throw that you'd go, wow. His accuracy, uh, you know, he's a veteran guy now, too. Think about all the snaps he's played. You can see when you're watching on film, he's got really good command. Uh, he knows when to throw the ball away. You know, he's got great courage. He'll wait till the last second and get the ball out. And then you, you talk about the RPO world. You know, they're good at running the football, but he's also good at reading it. So, really, it's all the above with him. Coach, have you ever played against a former quarterback before? Uh, you know, I don't know in college um, if I have. But, uh, like I said, he's an outstanding quarterback. Uh, just having the bye, having the bye week, you know, especially after the way the Big 12 season started. What what ways did the team leaders kind of help refresh and reset the reset the team? What what are the ways that that, that you guys really focused on? Well, kind of I taking think you know, on? obviously spending time together um, in the off week and be able to slow down and not have to worry about uh, you know an opponent has been really good. You know, we went ones on ones against each other. Um, you know, really more than we have all the way to back to fall camp scrimmage and. That has a way of, uh, of really bringing teams closer together, too. So I think it was, was a combination of those two things. 
Coach, you talked about the importance of the bye week for evaluating all three phases of your team. You said you saw some glaring areas for improvement. I guess what are, in your mind, the top areas that this team needs to improve upon looking at the second yeah, half of the you season? Yeah, I don't want to incriminate us too much about you know getting specific other than there was a couple things that really stood out that you just kind of go, okay, we're going to address that, we're going to address that, we're going to address that. Obviously, our, our, our run uh, – defense that that was one of the number one things uh, and then it was penalties uh, on offense and really probably just the basic overall execution on offense you know that was really um, what stood out big picture wise and then you look at certain areas you know red zone defense red zone offense how can we improve in those areas and so those are really the the big picture areas that just from a head coach's standpoint making sure that we're better moving forward Guess you talked about having some guys come back who were, who were banged up and injured. Overall health of the team, how, how much have you seen? For this, you know, this I would week? say right now, uh, you know, halfway through the season, I think we're in good shape. You know, there towards the last couple weeks, I mean, we were, we were just kind of hanging together, which that's to be expected. There's a lot of other teams in college football that halfway through the year, same way. You know, really hoping that our offensive line, you know, I think we're really close for our offensive line to all be healthy. Uh, that'll definitely help. Uh, I think we're getting closer to getting five guys, keeping them one position, getting that continuity uh, defensive line. I think we're healthier there. Uh, and I think that's where it really starts. Linebacker has been one of those positions that's been a struggle maybe besides Jason Johnson. Now you got some DNs that have some linebacker experience. And in the bye week, do you talk about maybe moving guys around and moving positions of guys? Yeah, you know, you could see some different things. Like I said, I don't want to say or incriminate exactly what we're doing moving forward, but uh, we evaluated all those things. And, uh, you know, I think one thing, too, that also stood out is special teams. You know, there's a couple guys that hadn't helped us up to this point on special teams that will have a chance to help us on. And that could equate on offense and defense playing a little bit more than maybe they did, if any at all, the first six games. From a mental toughness standpoint, what do you need to see from your team this week? Uh, mental toughness. I think it all works together. Physical toughness, mental toughness, that's really what we pride ourselves on. Um, you've got to play good quality football. And obviously the last six quarters were, were not up to our standard. Uh, but I expect us to, to cure that and moving forward and be better in those areas. Now, you've had a few weeks of Big 12 football under your belt. This has been one of the newbie teams who's now won against one of the existing teams. What's kind of been your impression on the level of Big 12 play and kind of how these new teams are adjusting to the league? Yeah, well, first of all, there's quality teams. Um, you know, every week you're going to go against, you know, quality players really in all all positions you're going against good depth and you're going against good coaches and so I really think it's all the above you got to play really good football uh, to win games in this league we knew that when we came in and that was really our approach we've got to start playing good football coach in your experience going into a game like this when probably a lot of people outside the building not giving you a chance is it a bit harder to coach the guys to kind of get them up and going or a little bit easier because you really don't have much to lose you, you know I think from the standpoint of what we went through and having an off week and uh, be able to kind of push pause like we talked about earlier. And then you turn on the film. I mean, you know, you got respect for them in all three phases. This is one of the best football teams in college football, okay? I think everybody knows that. And it's a big challenge for us, but it's a challenge. I know our players and our coaches are looking for. Me personally, I'm very excited. I mean, I'm excited for our team and excited for the opportunity. I will hear from Ricky in a, in a little bit, but what kind of an impact does his return have on, on the defense, you know, as much on the field as it does emotionally? Uh, who's that? Uh, Ricky? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of our best players. You know, I, I, I categorize him as an impact player. He can impact the game, uh, you know, with his pass rushing ability, with his ability to play the run. And he's one of those guys that makes everybody around him better. So to have him back, and I'd say, like I said earlier, I mean, John Rice is close to 100%. I think Ricky is, too, after just watching him practice uh, yesterday. And that'll be two really big keys, I think, to our overall team, having those guys back healthy. You mentioned offensive line getting closer to 100%. At center, you know, what is the situation there? Is it Caden Kittler's job if he's healthy? I knew Drake started there and Bula was banged yeah, up a little yeah. bit. It's been B playing. Bula's done some really good things. Um, you know, and really it was all about his snaps there for a while, but he's been snapping the ball uh, extremely well. I, I thought K 
Caden Kittler did a really good job when he's in. He's still probably not 100% right now, but he is getting closer. Um, and then Drake, you know, really starting to settle in a little bit more guard. He is capable of playing center, but I think that fits him a little bit more, um, you know, with not have to have the stress of snapping the ball and everything that goes with that. Gus, uh, RJ and Johnny have carried the load in the running backs room. The rest of the guys in that group, you talked about that before the season started, how yeah. deep this unit was. What's been their status? They have gotten a lot of snaps over the last couple of years. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that when you got somebody like RJ and Johnny, you know, especially Johnny, you're, you're sitting there from an offensive coach and saying, well, how can they get him the ball? How can we get him the ball more? Both those guys have done an outstanding job. That's nothing against the other guys. Uh, you could see the other guys play a little bit more. We'll see. Obviously, those two guys have stayed healthy, too. So uh, there'll be a little more specific plan as far as uh, that moving forward. But we do have two or three guys that if something did happen or need to play more, we have a lot of confidence in. We said that the very first of the year. I mean, that's one of our deepest positions. We knew it. We've stayed healthy so far. Uh, but those two guys are impact players. I mean, they're, they're uh, you know, averaging good yards, you know, when they touch it. Coach, just talking about the health, uh, getting the guys on the field is one thing, but how do you keep those guys on the field to kind of try to make a run at this thing for the second half of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think that works um, hand in hand. I mean, you know, now we're we're healthier at the midway point. Good. Now we got to stay healthy, and I think it's just a matter of managing your body, uh, managing your mind, and then having a little bit uh, of fortunate things happen staying healthy. You mentioned a reset button. What do you need to see from your team and fundamentals like tackling at this point in the season? Well, I think that that last week was really kind of good to go back and kind of go back to the fundamentals that you just said, uh, slow down a little bit, uh, focus on tackling, not just tackling, but on special teams tackling. A lot of times the offensive guys, you know, in practice every day don't get a chance to tackle. So that was good to, to do that. And a lot of times it's just good to go old school against each other. Being able to run the football, you know, fit the run on base offense, base defense, same thing against each other. And it was really good, and we, we got after it. Uh, if you ask the players, I'm going to bet they felt really good about last week, about just kind of going old school back to the basics. And that really will help us moving forward, I believe. What's your personal history with Oklahoma? I know you were at Tulsa. Did you play Oklahoma at that time? And, and Brenton Venables is their head coach. Any uh, back and forth there? Yeah, when I was at Tulsa, I guess in uh, 2007, we played Oklahoma at Tulsa, and Venables was the defense coordinator. Um, you know, I got family in Tulsa. I went to first and second grade in Tulsa. My mom's family's all from there. And grew up, you know, probably going to a game a year watching OU play back in the day. So very familiar. My stepdad is, uh, he was a big uh, Boomer Sooner fan. He's from Oklahoma City. So I dealt with that growing up. Uh, but I know a lot about it. I've uh, been there never as opposing coach, but as a spectator, took some of my high school players to recruiting. Matter of fact, Rhett Lashley, I took Rhett to a recruiting uh, visit one time in Oklahoma. So always impressed with their uh, uh, atmosphere and everything that goes with it, their tradition. So it, it's good to, to be a head coach on the opposing sideline. So were, were you an OU fan growing up, like going to games, uh, like as a little you know, kid I, and stuff? No, I, I was more of a Razorback fan, okay. you know, growing up. But, you know, Marcus Dupree, some of the great players, I was probably more fans of the, some of those great players. But, no, I was, a, I was a Razorback through and through growing up. Physically, JRP was said to be about 90% going into the last game. How do you kind of get him to trust him, his body mentally yeah, during the bye week? Yeah, that's a good question. And not, I don't know if it was 90%. I think that was that's kind of what, what I was was hoping. Uh, it is a matter of him going through practice every day and getting that trust. And I think he'll talk to you here in just a minute. But, you know, he's uh, really close to 100% now. And it's been a process. I mean, you know, we first – when it first happened, you know, there was questions that night where he was going to be back to play at all. Then it was six to eight, and then all of a sudden he was doing well, and then it was four to six. And, you know, it's been a process, and he's a great competitor. Uh, he's worked extremely hard to get back. And uh, I'll say this, I mean, he was real excited after last night's practice, and I was too. Coach, you mentioned in the fall about going over like a lot of situational football. Maybe you put a huge emphasis yeah. on those because you know you'll be in close games. Yeah. Has there been a tweak to that based on like the first four games? Yeah. There's a couple areas that obviously uh, end of the game scenarios. We won that. We won the first one, and then of course we didn't win 
uh, a close one. And so we just evaluated that. We worked specifically on some things that will help moving forward. That's you. You had Dylan for a, a season. Is there any advantage that you, you have knowing a little bit of some of his ins and outs that, that maybe you can study this week and, and get more? You know, I mean, he was he was with us, you know, for three games. And, you know, we were one of the top offenses in the country at the time. And then he got hurt. And then so, you know, um, I, I really don't think so. I mean, I just think that he's an outstanding quarterback, one of the best in the country. And every week you can turn on the film and you can see why. Their offense, what makes it a struggle? And, you know, UCF people are familiar with Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator, yeah. obviously. Well, they got good players. They got a good scheme. I, th I think Jeff's an outstanding coach uh, with the quarterback, you know, and uh, they play fast. Uh, they run the football and they throw it. You know, they, they can do both well and they got really good players. So I think it's a combination of all those things. As you look back on the first half of the season, how much of those self-inflicted wounds played a, a role game after game? Uh, too many. I mean, too many for my liking. And that's, you know, it was it was when we were watching it going through like, OK, this will be addressed. That'll be addressed. That'll be addressed. We'll be better in the second half in this area, that area. So really, that's the way I approached it. Okay, thank you all.